Hello, my name is Anushka Damova. I'm from the Czech Republic and I worked on a project which is called Monitoring of the Multiple Basis of Drug Addictions. Uh, first, motivation for this project was to better understand how brain works, to better understand its principles and mechanisms on a molecular level. So, at first, I worked on a development of a new method that would be able to monitor different substances in various areas of brain, different molecules and their concentrations. And then I focused on monitoring of a molecule that is called dopamine. This is dopamine, uh, and dopamine is a molecule that causes that we feel happy, that we feel delight. It's released in our brain, brain when we are rewarded. Uh, but unfortunately, the same mechanism is used by addictive psychostimulants, by drugs. And this is really dangerous because we start to be addicted, and it has also other side effects. Uh, and another great problem nowadays is that it's more and more common that pregnant women abuse drugs during pregnancy and in this way they endanger the even born baby and the baby is in the most vulnerable part of life during the prenatal, the prenatal development. And that's why I decide, decided to study this issue, to work on this project and to try to find out whether there is some difference between brains of children or of mothers that abuse the drug during pregnancy, uh, namely methamphetamine during pregnancy, uh, and brains of children with mothers with no experiences with drugs. Uh, for that, I used at first animal study uh, where we had two groups of rats. The first one is control group. Uh, and the second was, one was prenatally exposed to methamphetamine. Uh, thanks to a method called microdialysis, uh, I took samples from each rat, from each rat 14 samples, each one during 20 minutes. Uh, then these samples were prepared for quantification method and analyzed, quantified thanks to uh, liquid chromatography, ionization, and mass spectrometry. Thanks to that, I obtained these results. Uh, there is a chart for each substance that was monitored. The first one is for dopamine, and these are for metabolites of dopamine, primetoxetyramine, dehydroxyphenyl acetic acid, and homovanilic acid. Uh, there is a concentration, it was measured during time, uh, and this light blue line is prenatally exposed group of rats. Uh, and this dark one is control group of rats. And each point in this chart uh, is one sample, this number of samples. Uh, at first, I took three samples before application of methamphetamine. Uh, here, methamphetamine was applicated, and after application of methamphetamine, there are visible changes in concentration of dopamine as well as its metabolites. Uh, and it's quite visible that there are differences between these two groups. Prenatal uh, exposed group have, has higher basal level of, of dopamine. And it means that their brain is slightly different, it could work in slightly different way. Uh, and it could, for example, mean inclination to some disorders. Uh, it's also visible that after application of methamphetamine, dopamine increases much more in prenatally exposed group. And it means that these rats and also children are more sensitive to drug uh, and probably there is bigger predisposition to addiction, which is the most important discovery of this project because it means that children of mothers that abuse drug during pregnancy are even more vulnerable. Uh, they are even more likely to start to be addicted. It's difficult for them, more difficult for them to resist addictions. Um, as the last important conclusion, 
is that this method is very widely applicable because it can be optimized for different substances. Uh, it's not only about dopamine and its metabolites, it could be optimized for other molecules. Uh, and it can be studied in the whole in the all parts of the brain, you just need to choose which part you want to study. Uh, so it's very widely applicable and it could be used in future, for example, for monitoring of efficiency of pharmacotherapy or for studying stimulus. Uh, and or responses to st uh, various stimuli of healthy brain and disordered brain for studying neurological disorders such as Parkinson's disease or schizophrenia or epilepsy. So in my opinion it could have great future importance.